standard for creativity in the hands of artists, which I think we are all artists in some way because we create. And so I want to make a brief case for that, and then I'm going to give you guys some practice in being creative, if that's okay. Um, so when we talk about this, that's part of, you know, part of staying in the, in the, sh in the shadows, right? That um, when you're in the shadows, right, it's not just all, it's, it's about that, you know, that time you spend. We spent a lot of time yesterday on things like, meditating on the word, and we spend a lot of time on study, and we spend a lot of time on that. And sometimes you just need to be in the shadows just to create, right? You just need to kind of fumble around a little bit. You know, we just sing these worship songs here. Where do you think those worship songs came from? People, very good. Definitely people. But do you think that God just delivered a handwritten letter and says, here, artist, here is your song? No? It actually happens because they're actually in there fumbling around. If those of you that are musicians, those of you that do things like that, it's this chord, that chord, that doesn't sound right. There's a lot of this, there's a lot of that. And so it requires a lot of that creativity and a lot of times in solitude. Those who, those who are um, musicians, do you find that solitude helps you in your creativity? Raise your hand if that's true for you. Artists, okay. Those who say they're... I say musicians, not, not artists. We're all artists. We're not all musicians. Okay? So you do find that there is some value in being um, by yourself. Now, there's time for collaboration. There's time to be with other people. But then there's time that you've got to say, no, this has got to be my time. I've got to do this. Um, and for me, let's see if I can bring this up, and I will put it up here for you. Um, no, that's not what I want. But in my creation process... Uh, Rick has, um, Rick is kind of the same way, I think, in a lot of ways, as far as how, as far as how we uh, create things, right? So I'm not a musician. Uh, I'm more of a writer. And so when I'm creating things, I am, uh, you know, kind of, you know, looking for word choices, looking for, um, uh, you know, looking for themes. I'm looking for a lot of little things to make something work. And uh, so I just want to show you, if I can here, the, uh, some of the things that I've done just because uh, it took work to do it. And I want to show you that, listen, there's no reason why you can't come up with something, especially doing, um, you know, doing ministry, uh, whether you're doing it with students, whether you're doing it with adults, uh, you know, whatever that may be, is that you are trying to create something that best, um, you know, fleshes out the point you're trying to make, right? The, the point you're trying to make with, um, with your students. So let me, like I said, let me see if I can bring this up. Maybe I can't. Maybe I can't. We'll find out. We'll find out if we can or not. Yeah, it's not going to come up. That's fine, though. All right. So, hmm? yeah, but no, I'm talking about on my computer. I'm talking about from, from what I was trying to bring up on my computer. This is fine. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. I'll share it with you, and then if I can bring it up later, I'll, I'll do that. But I'm not going to worry about it a whole lot at this moment. Um, There we go. Cool, cool. All right, so we're talking about solitude and creativity. Now, some of the things, like I said, that I've created, they're not a big deal, but there's things that when I, when I try to communicate with students or with whoever, with you guys, when I try to communicate, I'm trying to be, figure out the best way to bring the Bible to life. What is the best way that I can flesh out this truth, right, to get from the, you know, to, to do the process we talked about yesterday, which was intellectualize, uh, what was the other two? Intellectualize internalize and integrate, right? So I want some, something creative to be able to do that. So I was, this is many years ago, this is probably the first thing I really ever created was, um, CSI was real big. Anybody like, anybody who ever watched CSI or, or anything like that? It's a great show, you watch it, it was a great show. And so I thought to myself, what if, what if these various crimes in the Bible 
were a series of lessons on you just talking about taking a scene and turning it into a crime scene. What would that look like if I put if I put Samson in a crime scene where you had to figure out what this story was happening? And so I created a room. Uh, you know, I put like cut hair and put hair all over the floor. Uh, you know, put all these various clues around so students could go around and try to figure that out, right? What story is this that they're even looking at? Some didn't even know the story. It's like, hey, you're trying to solve a crime here. You're trying to solve something. What happened? I think it was like the case of the missing power or something like that or something to that effect. And so they had to figure out what was the deal, what was the process with that. And in the process of doing that, they go ahead and they obviously they get the story and so forth. Uh, so I did like eight lessons of that. And then I did a thing just recently. Uh, I said, well, what if you took a Bible story and turned it into a, an escape room? And I thought, well, let's try that. What do we got here? So I started looking through stories, and I did uh, Paul and Silas in jail. And they had to figure out uh, how to get out of jail. <laughs> and so, awesome. so I said, all right, what are we going to do? And it was elaborate. I mean, it was like... It almost took way too much time, but uh, I tried to figure out what was it going to take for an hour, right, to do this. And they had to figure out numbers, and they had to put codes together, and they had to put puzzles together. And they had... didn't just have to sing praises? Nope, they didn't, not for them. Although song was a part of it, and they did have to sing a song. So, yes, so they did have to sing a song, but they had to get to the clues to put the song together to sing it, uh, Right. So it was like some popular worship song, whatever I did at the time, right? So they had to figure out and sing. It's probably a song that we sang in youth or something like that. And so, so my role as a creative person is to bring out that thing that I want to do. And you can do that. Like I said, I believe every person in here is an artist. You may not be an artist with a pen or a paintbrush, but you might be creative with money. Moms are artists for sure because they are creative with the budget, Right? They can do things with money. So there's all kinds of artistic skills across the board, okay? All right, so let me make my case. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So here we have God, our creator. It's in his title. <laughs> so uh, God, our creator. God did not have to use color, but he did. God did not have to use texture, but he did. God did not have to include smells, but he did. The reason... He knew the crown of his creation, mankind, would have eyes to see, hands to feel, and noses to smell. So God is a creator in all the senses of the word. Because when he's putting this together, he's saying, look, I gotta, I'm going to have a peop I'm gonna have people live here. I mean, he could have made the world 8-bit, if you know what that phrase is. 8-bit, like a computer, right? Like old computer games, like old Nintendo games. You do 8-bit, right? He could have done it in that format, but he didn't. He says, look, this is what I'm going to make here. So God is a creator in every sense of the word, okay? For we, listen to this, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Workmanship, the word poema, from where we get poem and poetry. In other words, God created us with skill, creativity, and imagination, okay? So I'm laying the foundation here that if you think you're not creative, I'm going to say that you are creative because your God is creative, okay? So let's look at, look at Jesus, the co-creator. It says, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he also made the universe. You guys are aware of that, right? We said, hey, look, let us make man in our image. So Jesus is there, co-creator, made the universe. He's there. And after saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. So why did Jesus use spit and mud? Is there a reason? Yes, according to Got Questions, several Roman writers and Jewish rabbis considered saliva to be a valid treatment for blindness, <laughs> which that'd be a little weird. My doctor said, we're going to fix this. Just give me, <laughs> give me a minute. Uh, we're going to you know, do some stuff here. Just try that at the altar one time. Just go to, the, if, if that, that's right. Yeah, but uh, look, just try it at the altar. Next time somebody comes up and wants to, needs prayer, just, you know, lick your hands and slap it on them, okay, and see what the response is, okay? Um, and uh, so the mud, on the other hand, is, is left to your imagination to some degree because there's theologians, people that says, oh, it's, well, it's from the, you know, from the earth and so forth and so on. 
And it makes me wonder, what if Jesus just thought about that on the fly? Well, they say they like spit. What am I going to put that with? Oh, mud. Let's put it with mud. Once again, I have no proof of that. Dirt. I have no, I have no proof of that, that Jesus made that. But what if he did? What if he did it on the fly just because he was in a creative moment? Right? I'm not saying that Jesus doesn't have plans. I'm not saying that Jesus doesn't have uh, uh, forethought to something. But I am saying that Jesus is creative. Right? We never see him do that really again, though. Maybe I think it's one other time he heals a blind man that way. But it's not a standard. And he directed the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves, two fishes. Looking up into heaven, he spoke a blessing. And then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the people. Jesus used a creative way to feed 5,000 people. He multiplied the food. He probably remembered that this was something his father did with manna and in the wilderness and put his own twist on it. Could Jesus have made manna just appear, bread like his father? He said, yeah, but you know what? I'm going to do something different. I'm going to bless it, we're going to break it, and we're going to break it up and we're going to hand it out that way, right? So the Holy Spirit, our creative helper, Says so now the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Genesis 1 2. And the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. John 1 14. And how did Christ become flesh? Through the creative power of the Holy Spirit to make a baby, not using conventional methods. I'm going to say it takes some creativity. If the Holy Spirit was a part of the creative process then, that he is a part of the creative process now. In other words, we don't just quit being, we look at all these miracles, we look at all these things, and yet I say that if you're going to take your time to go away for a while and be in solitude, why would the Holy Spirit not work with you to create something, to flesh something out, to, to bring about an idea, some dream that he's put on your heart, to be able to flesh that out into the world? Um, which we talk about that says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. So how did, um, sorry, I've got two slides here. All right, so let's talk about using your imagination in your, in your quiet time. Okay, so what I use is what I'm, Einstein says, Einstein says creativity is intelligence having fun. Okay, he also says the monotony and solitude of a quiet life stimulates the creative mind. So when you're by yourself and you don't have a lot of distractions and you take yourself away and maybe you turn your phone off or maybe you do something like that, you listen, your your mind begins to start figuring out ways to entertain itself. You ever been in detention? Where they nobody has ever been in detention? I've been in detention a number of times. And you are coming up with ideas of how to kill that hour, that 45 minutes or whatever it is. I mean, have you ever seen The Breakfast Club? Yeah. Okay creativity <laughs> because they had nothing so they had to figure out how they're going to how they're going to spend this time together right and so being alone and being in solitude is good for your creative mind it's good for your creative spirit if you don't do anything else go spend some time away and create something okay and say well what am i going to create paul how many of you have ever gone into devotions and said i have no idea what i'm doing you said i'm going to have devotion time you open your Bible, you look at it and go, yeah, me and you, Bible. And you have a little talk with the Bible and you go, all right, you're going to talk to me today, right? You're going to say something. All right, bring it. And you just stand there, not feeling it, right? So we're going to talk about that and try to help you a little bit. So you need to take time in the shadows to create, imagine, and dream, not outside of Scripture, to make it say something it does not say, but to bring the passage you're reading to life. So when I'm talking about your imagination, I'm not talking about getting outside the, the scope of Scripture and its validity and all that stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about jump-starting, jump-starting your time with the Lord, okay? Because if you're going to get in there and you're say, you know, sometimes, guys, let's be honest. Sometimes we just treat our devotion time like, you know, we're, we're concentrating so hard. I mean, it feels like we're spiritually constipated, we're just trying to, you know, poop out a revelation. You know what I'm saying? We're just like, we're like this. We're like, mm, and we're like, nothing is happening. And we get so intense and we get so weird about it. And we get so upset that something is not happening. That we have to relax. Okay. We have to just sit back for a minute and go, you know what? Maybe my devotion time is supposed to be, I don't know, fun. Does, I mean, if I said God is fun, is that a contradiction? 
If I said Jesus is fun, is that a contradiction? If I said the Holy Spirit is fun, is that a contradiction? No. So we look at our devotions, yes, as holy time, as a time we get away, but there's no, nothing that says that it cannot be fun. And it's as fun as you decide you want to make it. So I'm going to give you just a few things that may help do that, okay? All right, so I'm going to hand these out. Went to the game store the other day. Thought I'd pick these up. So what I need is, um, let's see. Would you do me a favor? Could you go ahead and hand these out, please? Just go to each table and just kind of lay however many dice they, they need here. Okay, just one a piece, just enough that everybody can have one. And then you can bring me whatever, whatever is left. Okay, now, I know you're excited because you think we're going to be gambling, but we're not gambling. No money shall be laid upon the table. We will save that for later. My, my room, my room at five o'clock, there'll be, uh, no, just kidding, we're not doing that. Uh, five o'clock, we're not, we're not gambling. We're not gambling, we're not, we're not doing that. Okay. Um, so I want you to flip into your Bible to a favorite parable or story you have. Your favorite parable or story. Huh? Where, and it could be anywhere in the Bible. Favorite parable. I say parable because normally that's New Testament and then story can be anywhere. Thank you very much. Oh, good. Plenty of dice left. Plenty of dice left. All right. When you found your favorite story, say, I got it. <laughs> then clearly it's not your favorite story then, is it? Because if it was your favorite story, you'd know exactly where it was. You'd have it highlighted and marked. You'd have that little tab, that little string. Oh, it is <laughs> <laughs> so, if God is creative, and Jesus is creative, and the Holy Spirit is creative, then we must be creative in our own way, okay? So, creative, quiet time ideas. So here's what I'm going to do. You have a dice there, and how many numbers are on a six-sided dice? Six, Six. very good. So, what I'm going to ask you to do is, uh, I'm going to put some ideas up here, six of them to be exact. I call this random God encounters. So you're going to roll your dice, and something may come up that you don't like. I don't care if you don't like it. I want you to do it anyway. Because the point of this is that you are going to do something and force yourself to do something you would not normally do. And that's the whole point of kind of being alone and being in the process <laughs> Is that, and once again, when I say write a poem, I'm not talking about Beowulf, okay? I'm talking about four lines, right? I'm talking about something that has, it could be a haiku if you want, okay? It doesn't even have to rhyme if you don't want it to be. It could be something like that, okay? But I want you to do something with your verse, your favorite passage, your favorite scripture, okay? So I'm going to let you, we're going to do this uh, a couple of times here, okay? So, and and there's no limit here. We're going to take a full five, seven, ten minutes, however long it takes you to do whatever you're going to do, okay? So when I say go, you're going to roll your dice, and then you're going to do that. If you get to collaborate, that's good. You can work with somebody else, okay? So you're hoping for a six, and if you, if you get up and you didn't roll a six, you lie, you die. That's how this works. Don't lie. God will kill you if you do that. I'm just kidding. He won't do that. He won't do that. Yes. Oh, oh, fives and threes. Okay, good. That, God is trying to tell you something. Okay. All right. Ready? Roll your dice. Yes. Yahtzee. All right. So whatever you rolled, listen. So whatever you rolled, if you write a poem about your favorite story, post a pic. What could that be? Here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be even more generous and I'm just going to throw out a bunch of uh, index cards. If you say, I want to use some paper, that if I want to do, that if I want to do something, uh, yeah, find the collaborators. If you're a collaborator, you can collaborate with somebody. Here, you guys can just divide those up amongst yourselves. Okay? So whose story do we do? Collaborate. You choose. Or you work on all of them. Whatever you choose to do. Yes. 
Huh? Oh, number two, post a pic. That's why I gave you those index cards too. Let's say you wanted to post a pic. So you're gonna do a picture of, of, of something, right? It could be anything. You could search the internet and find a picture or pictures. So let's say you try a um, uh, multiple, what do I wanna call that? Multiple pictures, collage. So let's say you put a collage together, photos, search for photos. It says this goes along with this. And then you say, okay, I'm gonna post this. I'm gonna do five, six, seven pictures, however many pictures you wanna come up with, put it in there and post it on whatever social media you have or just keep it in your phone, whichever you choose to do. But the point in doing this is that you're gonna take something, you're gonna, you're gonna create something out of it to make it interesting. And like I said, this may not be your whole Bible study, but it's a way to uh, kickstart your creative process, okay? Draw a picture. Like I said, I gave you the index card. Draw a picture, draw lots of pictures. You could, you could literally take your things, full, draw your pictures, make a little tent out of it, and you could create a little movie out of it where you're going, okay, I'm gonna do six of these, and then I'm just gonna film it. I'm just gonna film it going across. There's my little video of, of whatever that is, right? So draw a picture, you got five senses. Take your favorite passage, go through them all, go through hearing, sight, touch. What are all those things happening in there? Okay, you're not, once again, you're not changing the scripture, you're just trying to feel what it's like to be in that, okay? Uh, so yes, all the options, if you need any help, I'll be glad to help you and assist you. Other than that, carry on, go, do it. Mm -hmm. Can you do what? Sure, if you want to. All right, I will be asking those of you that will want to do it or to participate, and you can show me. You can probably come up here and actually put it on the thing. Yes, sir. Okay, like I said, you could, like I said, you could make a video by, you could combine things and say, okay, I'm going to draw a bunch of stuff and make a video. You can make a video of yourself talking about the scripture. You can make a video of just, of like you uh, recording the verse and you're reading it. It could be um, interviewing someone. You, could, you know what, that'd be fun. You could do something. Well, you didn't, coll you didn't get collaborate, did you? You just got to make a video. Okay. Um, but like I said, you could do something with extra paper. But once again, that's about the creativity part of it. How would you, how would this, what would this, ooh, what if it was a movie? What if you turned your favorite story into a movie? What would that look like? How would I do that? That's a good question. Huh? Yeah, it could be that. Or you could be doing, or you could do a pitch. Like, um, you could say, hey guys, I'm raising money. Uh, I'm going to be making a film uh, about this favorite story. Uh, let me tell you who's going to star in it. <laughs> Brad Pitt is going to be Abraham. Uh... <laughs> Okay, uh, you could you could do something like that. If you if you want to, I will allow it. Mm -hmm. If you choose, uh, I I will allow it. I will allow it. I need you to roll a saving throw, though. Huh? I need you to roll a saving throw. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> For you to be able to no, do it. I, 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 I mean, save, save versus uh, uh, rules. <laughs> versus rules. <laughs> Whatever way you choose to do it. Whatever way you choose to do it. Go right ahead. Yes, you can. If you want, to, if you get finished, you want to do another one, go right ahead. Yes. Five senses. So whatever story you have, ask yourself, number one, whatever, no, it could be whatever. No, no, it could be a, it could be a parable, it could be a story, it could be, uh, yeah, it could be Psalms. But what you're doing is you're using your five senses to say, what does this story look like, right? Because we read a story and in our imagination, it's somewhat one dimensional, right? We read a scripture, we go flat, right? You're going to take it and make it go whoop, go 3D. So in doing that, you're going to say, what do I smell in this psalm? What do I, what might I smell in this psalm? What might I see? 
what might I, what are the textures involved here? What might I feel? Might I feel the rocks of the ground? Might I feel those things? Might I feel seasonally, like do I feel the hot sun on my skin? Based on the context of the scripture, uh, right? So you have that, you have smell. What do I smell? What do I taste? Maybe there's food involved in this. What do I, what do I taste in this? You, yes, you write it down. Yes. Write it down. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I got five minutes. I understand, but can I do it as like I'm a servant watching? Sure, if you want to put yourself like in third person type of thing. Absolutely. Correct. No, no. Exactly. Yeah, you, you're exactly. You are, and, and essentially you are. Which one do you have? Five senses. Five senses, yeah. So you are literally that person. You are the third, you are the third person in the story. Absolutely, yes. I love it. Are you done with yours? Did you write a poem? Is that what you wrote? Nice. Can I see? I would love it. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's okay. I failed math, so you know we're. It's fine. Uh, is this the uh, is this the parable of the rich young ruler? The lost son. The lost son. Okay. I kind of went off the story. I say the parable. It's the story of the rich young ruler. Mm-hmm. You went off story. That's fine. I just kind of wrote what I felt. I wrote story. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Pretty good. How are we doing over here? Everybody doing good? Yes? Uh, it doesn't matter. You're doing it the, your way you're doing it. You do you, bro. For what? Well, what? There, he picked the throne room of God. Okay. Okay. Which, we'll do this. Which one of those do you think would best fit the yeah, throne room of God? It's not impossible to draw. No, it's not. If you have, if you have, you can use stick people. And once again, you can, you can condense it. You can, look, listen. You can, huh? I said, if someone draws it, what else do the other people do? Yeah? Yeah? Oh, I love that. That's a great idea. Great idea. All right, whatever you're going to do, do it in the next. I'm going to give you eight minutes. At 25 till, I shall be shutting it down. So you have seven, eight minutes. Oh, yeah. Well, somebody could, right. Maybe somebody could read it. She's going to make sound effects. And what are you going to do? Draw it, okay. What do we got there? What do we got there? Let me see. What do we have? Is this the rapture? Is this First Thessalonians? Is that what this is? Oh, it's an Exodus. I thought people were going. I thought people were going. You can see that, can't you now? 
much. You can see that now. I'm thinking, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> where, like, the, the fuel. Well, that's what they say. Art is subjective. It's whatever we see. The artist meant one thing. We see another sometimes. It's interpretive. What you got, Brett? Huh? Pretty happy with that. Oh, oh, I like that. That's tight. I love it. That's, that's tight. Oh yeah, art, art is tight. Right? And nobody says art is tight. Creativity is tight. It's so tight. You can. You got exactly six minutes to get it done. Whatever you're doing. Five minutes and counting. Five minutes and counting. Five minutes. What was yours that you were working on? Uh, like five senses. Oh, five senses, okay. Okay. I'm trying to figure it out for like the taste and the touch and the seeds and stuff. Okay, okay. You'll get there. What do, what do you think seeds feel like? Okay, could be grainy. If you're a farmer, how would your hands, how do you think your hands would feel? If you're a farmer, dirty all the time, okay. Okay, four minutes, four minutes. putting your hands on them yeah 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 what what is like what is Daniel wearing right what does that feel like to grab a hold of him or oh okay very nice very nice good job good job 
Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes, Sam. You must make a dexterity check. Uh, <laughs> or a constitution check, maybe. <laughs> Where's your... your Hmm? Yeah. Oh. Huh? Was what? Is it rendering, or is it? Well, you know what? I won't call. I won't call on you until like last. So you'll have some time. Ooh, the, I love pizzazz. It's like bejewel, like you and you bejewel something, right? Put jewels all over it. Yes, absolutely. One minute. One minute. However, yeah, if you want to, buddy, I'm with you. You have pictures? Is that what you have? You can just take pictures and then then put it up there. Okay. Now it's Emma, right? Yeah. Emma, I have a feeling this is really easy for you. Yeah. Being being a musician, by the way, great yeah. music. Thank you. Fantastic, I love it. I'm a rock and roll blues guy, so. I love it. I'm a rock and roll blues guy all day, so. The best. I love it. So the creative process for you is somewhat normal, because you're always creating. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's your wheelhouse while everybody else, some other people are just suffering. <laughs> I don't know what to do. There you go. That's right. Some, some people live with uh, the uh, creative block all the time. They just, they, they don't, they're just like, Ugh. Yeah. You need to share your brain with other people. You just need to like just drop some things yeah, in there. Exactly. <laughs> Give them a little bit. Here you go. Shoop. Right there. <laughs> All right. Time is up. Time is up. Who is ready? By the way, we'll just go ahead and call this show and tell. Okay. We'll just call it show and tell. Because really, isn't that the gospel? Show and tell. Isn't that what that is? Show. We got to tell and show. We'll just call it tell and show. Yes, or go and tell. That's also good. All right, who's first? You guys here, you're up at the board already. Are you ready? Let's go and do this first. So you got the collaboration. So tell us about what the, um, what the verse is, all that good stuff, and, and what you're going to be doing, and, uh, and then share it with us. We didn't pick a uh, verse. We picked a whole chapter. Fantastic. Revelation 4, the description of the throne of heaven. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Ambitious. All right, carry on, carry on. I'm going to read. Uh, after this, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard speaking came to me like a trumpet and said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I, I was in the spirit, and behold, the throne stood in heaven, with one seated on the throne, and he who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian. And around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne... 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones were 24 elders, clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumbling. <laughs> and peals of thunder. And before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of fire of God. And before the throne there, there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. 
And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures full of eyes, front and behind, full of eyes. Yeah, that's creepy. <coughs> First living creature, like a lion, the second creature. Yeah. Now, if this is your morning devotion every day, I don't know how you'd feel about that. It seems a bit excessive for your devotion time, but it is, it is memorable. And here's the deal, right? Is sometimes creativity and retention go together because you're saying, well, what creative way can I do this in order for me to remember something? How many of you are not very good at memorizing scripture? Okay. But you are good at memorizing photos or pictures or something else of one of your senses that helps you do that, okay? Um, anybody else? Give us, give us something. Yes, sir. Come on. Do I need to get off for you to get off? That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Who's got something else? <laughs> okay. All right. Who's got, who's got something else? All right. Uh, can you uh, put this on the screen, please? Everybody. Excellent. Who's got a poem? I would like to hear a poem, please. She has a poem. It's really good. <laughs> what what did you do by the way? I did the five senses and I'm making a movie. And you best. Okay. All right. Would you like to share your you don't have to. Job, okay. Nice. Well done. I thought, my, I thought you were going to have a hard time. I said, what, what rhymes with sores? But anyway, 
Uh, <laughs> Job. Anyway, swords. 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 Okay, that could that could work. Uh, all right. Who's got something else? Something different that we haven't used yet? Does anybody do five? Yes, five senses. Yes. Tell us about your story and the five senses you got from that. I did Daniel in the lion's den. Okay. Uh, I hear the grumbling stomachs of the lions. I smell the scent of the rotting bodies in the lion's den. I see Daniel being thrown into the lion's den. I don't taste anything because the king doesn't eat, so I will eat. And then I wake up the next morning and I see Daniel's out of the lion's den. And then I'm the person who pushes the bad guys into the lion's den, so I touch them, pushing them in. And then I've watched them get eaten by lions. Okay, well done. That's great. I'm, huh? You want to do what? I wondered what you did by that. Yeah, there you go. Anybody else? Yes. I did two. First one, I don't know how to share it, was the picture. I took my favorite story, which is Luke 7 of the sinful woman forgiven. And I took this picture. Most of you guys can go see it on Instagram. Oh, you're getting lots of hearts, though, by the way. So people are hearting it up. Can you, can you put that on? Can you take her picture and put it on the screen? Um, and then I also did, like, um, all of these things, I guess, um, from the woman's perspective. And then your faith has saved you, not by what you eat or what you drink, but by the word of God. That's what I love about it. How can faith save? Is that really all it takes? All my life, I've been outcast, stared at, and mocked. But for the first time, people are staring, but not because of something I said or did, but because of what he said, the Lord. Wow, that's powerful. That's powerful. Listen, that's, that is fantastic. Oh, here we go. This is the picture here. It says, your faith has saved you, now go in peace. This is the picture she took. Uh, I think that's a great picture. And by the way, people think, like, social media is about creativity, right? It's not about static. It's about dynamic. And so how many of you have unsaved friends that follow you on social? Hey, unsaved friends? Okay, what if you started doing, and I have a theory, I'm working on my theory of what I call index card youth ministry, that you can do ministry and all you really need is an index card to do it, where you say, every day, you just put up a little cartoon about, there's this guy, have you ever seen the napkin guy? This dude's like famous. He's got, he lives in Birmingham, and every day, all he does is write a note on a napkin, and it's funny but the fact that he just writes it on a napkin and puts it there and takes a picture, it could be a note to his kids, it could be something, but it's really, really funny. But something so simple as a napkin with something written on it, right? He's got however many thousands of followers he has, okay? But what if your friend saw you using your creativity of some kind and posting and saying, wow, maybe that'll get some different engagement versus a static scripture. By the way, the word by itself, altogether powerful, Amen. Altogether, the word is powerful all by itself. We're not taking anything away from that. The point is that, number one, is you're getting something from it, but also you're posting something dynamic about it that maybe feeds into your friend's imaginations and going, what is this? Oh, what is that, right? How many of you in this, pro we're going to stop here, but how many of you, at least in the process of doing this, discovered maybe you're a little bit more creative than you thought you were? No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Nope, not <laughs> confirmed, not creative at all. Confirmed. Those, well, I understand. Once again, it's not something you do every day. It's, it's just, once again, it's a Kickstarter to get your devotion time off the ground, right? Then you can go into studying and Greek words and whatever it is you want to do, go to it, okay? Anything else? Any other, anybody else want to share that didn't get a chance to share? I want to give you an opportunity. Okay. All right. Well, I thought you guys all did great. I hope at least the, the practice or the experience of it opened your eyes to at least, let me ask this, you may not be creative, but let me ask you this then. How many of you at least in creating, in the creation process, saw your story differently? Okay, and that's really the goal. It's not to become, you know, Picasso here. It's, it's your goal is, how am I seeing and viewing the scripture and how can I best relay that to the people around me in a three-dimensional type of way? Amen? All right, good enough. Uh, I took five minutes, so I'm going to give you an extra five minutes. We'll start back at five after 10. How's that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.